In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, God, I want to bless and magnify your holy name. For another new day you have made. We'll bring you back to you as an offering that you bless and cause you bless the Lord of Israel in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy Father, as we look into your word this hour, we invite the Holy Spirit to come and teach us, to make us understand the word to retain and practicalize it, so that the blessing that you have for us will not have us in Jesus' name. Okay. But as we bless every brother and sister that will listen to this word today and by way of social media, that your hand of blessing be upon us all of God, all, all in Jesus' name. Holy Father, there is no who has sinned against you in our thoughts, in our action and behavior. We are to forgive us and look down from heaven and fill up with your grace and blessing in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Your word said, that is there for rest to you for God. But I will thank you because there is rest. We receive your rest. We receive the Lord of Israel. And let your rest and blessing be upon us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Brothers and sisters, today we are having a new topic. And we are coming up with the book of Judges. And the book of Judges said, our topic is leadership failure, success without wisdom. Leadership failure, success without wisdom. You know, we all want success. We all are pushing success. But to have success is very sweet, but a success that turns to a cost. And that's success without wisdom. Any man or woman, that they have success or achieve success without the fear of God, that man or woman is bound to fail. We can see here the story of Gideon. Gideon was a remarkable leader in Israel. He was a great military warrior. God used him to accomplish great things for the nation Israel. But as he achieved Gideon, he made a, a vital mistake. His success gets into his head. He created gold. He collected gold from the spoil of the war. And he used those gold now to make an effort. An idol that became a snare, a cost to the children of Israel. May the blessing that God has blessed us with may never become a cost to us in Jesus' name. Amen. So today people are forgetting God. They are using their money to commit sin. They are using their money to do evil. Because they are rich, they don't have God in the equation. And instead of, the, instead of the blessing that God has given to them becoming a blessing, it actually become a cost. So we have to be very careful that we don't allow the success we have deceive us. This world is not our home. We are a stranger in this world. As a stranger, we have to be very careful that we are not being deceived by the temporary things that is happening today. The temporary blessing. These are not lasting value. The money we are using is a piece of paper. The houses we have, they are all just rod, cement, sand, lead, and paper. And the car we are driving, they are just a piece of rod and wire. That's all. So on that basis, when we acquire this non-lasting value item, we not to wear our rights. Instead of us to focus on the main thing, the pleasing of the Lord, we neglect God and we go after all these things that don't have lasting value. So may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to pray that God will give us wisdom to actually seek Him with all of our heart, all of our soul, so that we will not go against God's will. But it's very easy to be betrayed by the thing we see or by how people do other things, want to be like others. They will never be like others in Jesus' name. We are going to read in Judges chapter 8 from verses 1 to 35. Mm-hmm. God bless the word as we read it in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 8 started from verse 1. Then the people of Ephraim asked Gideon, Why have you treated us this way? Why didn't you send for us when you first went out to fight the Midianites? And they argued heartedly with Gideon. But Gideon replied, What have I accomplished compared to you? Aren't even the, le- the leftover grapes of Ephraim's harvest better than the entire crop of my little clan 
of Abiza. God gave you victory over Oreb and Zeb, the commanders of the Midianite army. What have I accomplished compared to that? When the men of Ephri heard Gideon's answer, their anger subsided. Gideon then crossed the Jordan River with his 300 men, and though exhausted, they continued to chase the enemy. When they reached Sukkot, Gideon asked the leaders of the town, Please give my warriors some food. They are very tired. I am chasing Ziba and Zamuna, the king of Media. But the officials of Sukkot replied, Catch Ziba and Zamuna first, and then we will feed your army. So Gideon said, After the Lord gives me victory over Ziba and Zamuna, I will return and tear your flesh with the thorns and brass from the wilderness. From there, Gideon went up to Pene, and again asked for food, but he got the same answer. So he said to the people of Pene, After I return in victory, I will tear down this town. I will tear down this town. By this time, Ziba and Zamuna were in Kako with 15,000 warriors. All that remained of the allied armies of the east for 120,000 had already been killed. Gideon circled around the, the caravan route east of Nab Noba and Jebeha, taking the Midianite army by surprise. Ziba and Zamuna the two Midianites came, fled, but Gideon chased them down and captured all their warriors. After this, Gideon returned from the battle by way of Herod's pass. There he captured a young man from Sukkot and demanded that he write down the name of all the 77 officials and elders in the town. Gideon then returned to Sukkot and said to the leaders, Here are Ziba and Zamuna. When we were here before, you, taunt, you taunted me, saying, Cut Ziba and Zamuna first, and then we will feed your exhausted army. The word of the Lord. Thank you to God. The lesson here today is about the failure of leadership. You know, people can behave irrationally, either in their personal life, either in their marital life, in their businesses, or in other aspects of their life. And you find somebody who is behaving irrationally, there is something that is controlling that person. That's called evil spirit. Gideon was given a tremendous power, victory by God, to accomplish a great feat. He wanted to go to war, as we saw last week, with 30 something thousand men. The Lord told him there are too many. He doesn't need that many people. God said, I don't want you to think. The victory is by your power. You have too many soldiers. He went with 10,000, God said, they are too many. He went with 300. For God to help prove to him that the victory is from him, the Lord alone. And he went to the battlefield and defeated this enemy and had tremendous victory. And now he came back home. His own family members, his own people, with him. The Bible says, Your greatest challenge in life are the members of your household. He said, A man doesn't have problem either as a pastor, as a leader, or any member of his household. 
May God this also may not appreciate you. May not recognize the call that God has placed upon your life or your leadership. Say they were arguing with Gideon and said, You went to war without consulting us. Why did you not send, why did you not call for us to find the Midianites? You know why? Because they have achieved the victory now. As you saw the victory, everyone, everyone wants to participate in the bandwagon. Everybody wants to say, well, I want to share in the loot, in the booty. But Gideon was very wise in answering their question. He subsided the argument. He told them, you don't have to fight, you don't have to be worried. You guys are more successful than me, even though we have gone to this war. He said, your grapes, your harvest, your crops, everything you have is better than mine. He said, God gave you victory over Oreb and Zid, the commander of the Midian army. What have I accomplished compared to that? Gideon is trying to make them know they are more successful than him. They shouldn't worry about his little sources. Now, when the men of Ephraim had Gideon's answer, their anger subsided. You know that the way we talk is very, very important. The Bible says with our mouths, we can create peace. With our mouth, we can create war. And everything we say is from the heart. So we have to be very careful what we say all the time. And that's why I say to a man, does not offend in words. Such a man is a perfect man. What you say or what you eat can make people to be offended with you. So I have to be very careful. When people go to a party or they're in public occasion, when they are finished eating, watching, or finished drinking, they start saying all kind of rubbish. So John a video was very, very smart. He subsided his people's anger. But they say, you guys are better than me, you're better than my clan, you're better than my village. Because I have this sauce, it doesn't mean I'm somebody special. Do you ever think you're better than other people? Do you ever think your education is better, your money is better? Or because you have this money right now, or because you have this education, you don't have no respect for nobody. Because you say, oh, I have arrived. I have, I have got in this position. I have got this education. I have got in this position. No, I'm very powerful now. I'm special. That is not what the Lord wants us to do. The Lord is calling us to always be humble, to always talk with respect, to always talk with fear, with humility. And that was displayed by Jonah, by Gideon in the early days of his life. Now Gideon continued with the conquest, the war. Gideon crossed over the Jordan River with his 300 men. The 300 men that God gave to him, they are still with him, but this time they are exhausted. As human being, that is the time we are exhausted. When you are exhausted, that is how you are more vulnerable to disease, to failure, or to temptation. So we have to learn to rest. Rest is very, very important. And you have to learn to know when to cease from walking or when to give yourself a time to relax or to relax your body. The body we have is not a machine. God told us, say, I want you to walk six days. And on the seventh days, you should rest. The seventh day is not a day to go from meeting to meeting, from village house to village house. It's not a day of shopping. It's actually a day of resting. So now, the soldier, the, the army were exhausted. So Gideon continued with the chase of the enemy. That's when they reached us, when they reached Sukkot, Gideon asked the leaders of the town, Please give my warriors some food. Brothers and sisters, listen and listen very well. When people have a need, they generally have a need, especially soldiers or politicians. If you are running a business, listen to this one. Don't stop them. Do not stop them. You may be a political, but whatever party that is running, it doesn't matter if Democrat or Republican, support both of them. So anybody that win, you be their good books. So Gideon asked the people in Stuka, 
Give us some food. My people are hungry. My soldiers are hungry. They are very tired. I'm chasing Ziba and Zemona, the king of the Middle East. But the official of Zuko replied, Catch Zimba and Zemuna first, and then we we'll feed your enemy. They were on the fence. They didn't want to get involved with, just, with Gideon's war. He said, No, what if you don't capture this, these kings you are pursuing? The friend, of, the friend of my enemy is my enemy. So, for that reason, they are not saying, We're not going to give you food. In case you don't know, win this war, we don't want to see that Pokemon attack us. But that was a mistake. How much food will you give to them? You should have called them and said, Okay, take food. I remember during the Civil War in Nigeria, the soldiers of both sides come, they ask for anything. We give to them to be on the good book of both sides. When the Biafra came, they were looking for food. The food was given to them by my villagers. So when the Nigerian soldier came, we also give them food. They will offer them goat, they offer them jam, they offer them everything to pacify them. So this will be that mistake of refusing Gideon and his men the services they needed as military men. So we have to be very careful. So Gideon said, after the Lord gave me victory over Ziba and Zemuna, I will return and tear your flesh with tongues and breasts from the wilderness. Gideon is very angry right now. I am hungry. I need help. Give me food. Help me. Take care of the soldiers. He said, I'm not going to help you. You know what I notice about America here? The restaurant, people that run restaurants, they don't sell food to the police. When the police is on that area parading, 7 Eleven, when the policeman in uniform on parade go there, they give them food for free. They give them drink for free. Most of the restaurant give food to the policemen for free. You know why they are doing that one? Because these policemen are protecting them literally. If the policeman is patrolling the area is hungry and is stopping your store to buy something, you are trying to extract the little money he has from you. Well, when you have to make the man who pretend he not hear you, when he may come, but he can slow down in response. So, Gideon said, this is what I'm going to do to you. From there, Gideon went to Penel and asked for food. But he got the same answer. He like these two times, said, oh no, no, we're not going to give you food. We don't want to be part of your military conquest. We are not interested in whatever you are doing. We're not interested. That was a huge mistake. So Gideon responded, After I return in victory, I will tear down this tower. This is a big tower they built. Gideon said, I will tear it down. Brothers and sisters, you see here right now, there are a lot of leadership failure here. Leadership of the town, they were not wise. But Gideon was also hungry. And it's angry. They say a hungry man is an angry man. Look at your life. Are you angry? Are you hungry? Are you serving the Lord? When you are hungry, how do you respond? When you are looking for money, how do you respond? When your position is low in life, do you sell yourself as a prostitute? Do you work in your position, your faith? Do you work in it? So, the enemy they are pursuing, they continue. They have already killed 120 soldiers of the enemy. Gideon circle around the caravan east of the Neba and Joba, taking the Midianite army by surprise. So Gideon is very good at military conquest. These people were resting, and Gideon was able to capture them. Are you resting? You know when you are resting, that is the most time of danger in life. Spiritual rest. You say, well, I don't have time for Bible study. I don't have time for prayer. I don't have time for meditation. I don't have time for God. That is the time you are most likely to fall into sin. As children of God, we have to be very careful that we do not allow our lives to be influenced 
by sin. It's very, very easy to be influenced. You want to be like other people, like your friends. You know, God will the children of Israel. He said, this land I'm going to give to you, the people in that land, they worship idol. I don't want you to be like them. Be careful that you're not like them. What the children of Israel did, immediately they got there, they were copying the people that God warned them not to copy. As a Christian today, we are living in this life like this world is our home. We are living like our unbelieving friend. Whatever they are doing, we are doing it. However, they are sewing their clothes, we are sewing it. Sometimes I see some lady on television and his dog, they will tear their clothes. I say, the purpose of clothes is to cover your nakedness. They were exposed, if you see their private part, and they will cut it up, you will see their breast. And their breast will almost be falling down. I say, what's going on? Because they want to think that is a fashion. You think that they are dressed, they are looking for men. And your children, who may be daughter, want to be like them too. They say, oh, is that what make, make men to pursue me? I'm going to dress like that. And at the end of the day, they are ending up like people of the land and blessing does not come. That's why I see today a lot of women are miserable. You naked yourself, you ship yourself to men, the men will not marry you. They are only looking for a free ride. After having a free ride with you, they say, oh, that girl, don't mind her. You will spread your name to other men who may be interested in proposing to you. That's why you don't cheat your life. And you are working. You are spending your money like there is no tomorrow. You are going from party to party, from night club to night club, from one party to another, 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 another. You don't have time to rest. And when you look at people that does that, you find that their lives don't last. A lot of people just sit at their table, both in America here and other parts of the world. They just die because they, have, they are not resting. Your heart needs rest. Your body needs rest. So both soldiers now exhausted. Zimba and Zemuna, the two Midianites came fled. But, uh, but Gideon chased them down and captured all their warriors. You know, the soldiers are tired and this warrior and the king, they are all tired. You know, after a long time war, like you see what's going on in Russia right now. The Russian people are tired and uh, the, the, the Ukraine people are tired. Ukraine are killing a lot of Russian soldiers. Just in this April and May, they killed over 30,000 soldiers of Russia. That's a lot of people. Since the war has started, they have killed 500,000 of Russian soldiers. That's a lot of people that are there. But Putin does not see the handwriting on the war. This is how it has started. And at the end of the day, it has died a pitiful and horrible death. So you find that if you don't take time, you can imitate others. You know, you may want to work all day, all night. You don't actually have time to rest. And at the end of the day, you're going to become weakened because of lack of rest. And what are we pursuing? Immaterial thing. Now what I said might be in the old in the introduction. I say the thing we are pursuing is it car, they are piece of metal. Is it cloth? They are piece of cotton, piece of just trash that turn to cloth. Is it house? They are piece of wood, stone and sand and nails. That is the house. But we push, we use all this thing. And it have no lasting value. Your house you are living right now, in a hundred years time, is going to be a trash house. If somebody is living there, they're probably going to tear down some old house and build a modern one. They're going to say, oh, this is an old house. Because that time, the world would have changed, more technology. They're going to have, they're going to have what they call smart, smart houses with more energy efficient. So the house we have right now, which we are laboring for, it's just a place to rent, just to stay for the temporary. And the money we are putting a piece of paper. Somebody recognizes it as means of exchange to buy goods and services. But the most important thing is your service for God, the time you spend for God. So Gideon was a great man. He did a terrible, he did the other great thing. But you're going to find it out. He made a big terrible one. Verse 13. Gideon chapter 8, Judges chapter 8, verse 13. After this, Gideon returned from the battle by the way of Herod Pass. There he captured a young man from Sukkot and demanded that he, that he write down the names of all the 77 officials and elders in the town. 
Be careful who you associate with. You never know what they can take your name to. You never know what, what things they are doing, what influence they have, who they are associated with. You know that if you are a terrorist, if you are, if you are associated with a terrorist, according to American doctrine, you are a terrorist. If you, can, if you, if you are associated with a man who is a thief, you are a thief. Or if you befriend a thief, you are a thief. So you have to be very careful who you are associated So they catch this young man, they ask him, who are the officials of this time? Gideon then returned to Sukkot and said to the leaders, here are Zeba and Zebuna. When we were here before, you taunted me saying, catch Zeba and Zebuna first, then we will feed your exhausted army. Then Gideon took the elders of the town and taught them a lesson, punishing them with thorns and breath from the wilderness. You can see that you don't underrate people. Because people are poor today, don't look at them. Be as much as possible to be peace with all men. But it doesn't, there are people who don't know this, who can who you can never help. There are some people who are just lazy, who don't want to do nothing. They go from church to church, they are begging. From house to house, they are begging. People are constantly asking me, Pastor, can you give me some money? And I'm telling them, I say, Pastor, I don't receive one penny from this ministry. I love God, I like to teach the word of God. I am working like any other person. But I don't waste my money, I'm very careful with my money because as a pastor, when you begin to beg, you are disrespecting God. I never wanted to be a pastor. But God called me, and at the end of the day, I accepted the call. And I told God, this is one condition. I must be a pastor. You must honor the word. And you must bless me financially so I don't have to be a body to people I'm teaching the world. And God said, go ahead and I will bless you. And I will also give you the power to bless all that will come along your way. And release, your, release my power then. So over these years, we have done that successfully. And God has been our witness at this. So we have to be very careful what we do. So because they refused Gideon help, Gideon then came back, which Bible says we should not repay evil for evil. But as military men all over the whole world, they have to be very careful. When military are in war front, even American soldiers. Or even though they have rule of engagement in war, but sometimes in the heat of the battle, they can still do some, some good stuff that may not be good in our own eyes. So Gideon came back and tore down the tower of Pender and killed all the men in the town. Wow, you said you don't want to give me food. I'm going to break down your tower. I'm going to kill all of you. So you find that if those who had just given Gideon the minimum food, it wouldn't have cost them as much as it's costing them right now. But because they refused a simple request, their life had been destroyed. Their city is destroyed. And all the men of the city are killed. You know, a town without men, that town will die a natural death. Because you need men and women to be to populate a town. And as I always say, if all the men and all the women refuse to have children, in a hundred years from now, everybody in the world will be dead and there will not be anybody. And that is not the will of God. That way God encourages us to have procreation and to obey his word. Are we living according to the word? People are married so they don't want to have children. They are having sex. They want the pleasure of the sex. We don't want to have the children. They are telling the children. And a lot of women want to be single women. And they are living a life of deprivation and degradation. And the men are involved in so many horrible things that it's not good to write about. So Gideon kill all the men. Then Gideon asked Ziba and Zemunah, the men you kill are terrible. What were they like? Gideon wants to know who are the men these people have killed. He asked them, who are the men you kill? You know, in battlefield, you have to do what they call investigation. You want to know the rule of engagement of these people that are fighting with you. What have they done? Who have they killed? And now Gideon has the upper hand because he is the veto. And he asked them, 
Who do you kill? Tell me about the people you kill. They said they are like you. They replied, they all had the look of a king's son. They were, very, they were my brothers, the son of my own mother. Gideon exclaimed, and surely as the Lord lives, I wouldn't have killed you if you didn't kill them. So Gideon is now saying, I'm retaliating. I'm retaliating. Because you have killed my brothers, I will also kill you. Brothers, and you have to be very careful what you do because you may offend one person. Your children may reap that fruit. My father always gave me a story of kindness. There was this man. I have said the story over and over. He was a police commissioner in charge of then Midwest. And this man came for to join the military from the east part of Nigeria. And this man was not recruited. After he finished, and a, and a grown-up man he was crying. And the man saw him and said, Why are you crying? He said, Well, I didn't have no job. I came here. I thought I'd be able to be recruited into the Nigerian police force. I don't have any money to go back. The man called uh, the person, he said, Write his name down, put him among the people recruited, and let him go for the training. The man he did that kindness to never forget. Along the way, the war broke out. And uh, this man was captured by then Biafra and took him to the eastern part of Nigeria. And the war region. One day, as the war was getting rich, they said, Well, these people were captured, we better kill them so that we will not escape. And turn against us. They lined them up to be killed. And this man uh, is uh, a military commander in the Biafra army. And the man looked around and said, Let me see if people want to kill. Make sure that people were actually killed, not substitute somebody else for somebody who wants to kill. The man went ahead and looked at them and said, This man, oh, no, no, bring him out of the, uh, of the fire squad. Take him to my room. The man said, him. The man was sure that they were about to kill. He said, you are the one that put me in this position. The man said, what? How? He narrated the story to him. How he recruited him to the Nigerian police force that gave him an edge to become the commander of the Biafra army that time. Brothers and sisters, the little kindness you show today can pay off a big time tomorrow. Although the generation we have today, I call them take tick generation and not give me generation. They, once, you, once you do for them, they don't remember that one. They are looking for more. They are always wanting to take and take and take and take. They are never content. They are like barren women. They are like a dry ground. A dry ground. They are like grave. They are like fire. They are never satisfied. They, never, they, they, they never appreciate any blessing. And for that reason, the Lord does not like that. So Gideon said, If you have not killed my people, I will not have killed you. We have to be very careful how we offend people. You never know who you are offending, how they are related. This person's brother may be that person's brother or sister. Somebody was talking to me one time. I said, be careful what you say about people because you never know the relationship between this person and that person you are talking about. Yeah, you heard something about that. This person was talking to was actually related to this other person, but he didn't know that. But the advice I gave come to pay. Because if you don't take time, whether at work, they ask you, what do you think about your boss? You don't know the person that is asking you relationship between them. You know, two people can be a different name. Like in my family, some people answer the grandfather's name. A Roman is our is our grandfather. And the name is Sikon, great grandfather, children are carrying it. So they are a large family. But that people carry their immediate father's name. And the family begin to celebrate, but we are all from one father. And it's a lot of people today all over the whole world. There are other people in the US here that carry this friend name, but we are all the same family. But you don't know who you are talking to. If you are talking to somebody that will be related to somebody you are talking about, if you are talking bad about that person, he may come back to hurt you. That's why you have to be very careful what you say. Then give your turn to reject his son, his other son. He said, Kill them, but Jedi did not draw his sword, 
for he was only a boy and was afraid. You know, we shouldn't teach children how to do bad things because you never pay. You are going to see later on all this thing that Gideon is doing, they come to reflect on his family after, he, after his death. Then Zeba and Zemuna said to Gideon, Be a man, kill us yourself. So Gideon killed them both and took the ornament, the royal ornaments, from the neck of their camel, the crested that was on their camel. He took it and hold it. Gideon's secret effort. So then Gideon, then the Israelites said to Gideon, Be our ruler. You and your son and grandson will be our ruler, for you have rescued us from the media. The Gideon replied, I will not rule over you, nor will my son. The Lord will rule over you. You now see Gideon make a very nice statement here. He said, the Lord was the one that gave us the victory. They would say, oh, you, you, you help us to win this war. You should be our leader. Gideon said, no, 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 no. I wasn't the one that won the war. Now, do you take glory for your success? Maybe you pass your exam. Say, oh, because I'm very smart. Maybe you get promotion at work. You pass your, 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 your whatever they are giving to you at work. You have a good salary now. You have a good job. Oh, no, what happened? I am very smart. I'm very dazed, that's why, oh, I beat everybody as well as them. Do you, give, do you give glory to God? Gideon was very humble here. He said, no, no, I don't want to be your leader. It is the Lord that will rule over you, not me. Do you assume all the power? Do you take all the glory? When I was becoming a pastor, I told God, under one condition, I want to be a pastor, I will not take the glow, gold or the glory. By the grace of God, I have, I have stick to that. I said, I don't want to touch the glory of God. I don't want to touch the gold. You see, most of my write-up, I tell you, I am not after your money. My concern is that you know Christ. Because the money you are pushing right now, you are going to leave them behind in this world. The clothes you are buying, the house you are buying, the car you are buying. These are things we are laboring for, but they have no value. They have no lasting value. But Gideon replied, I will not rule over you, nor with my son. They wanted Gideon to create a dynasty. But Gideon said, no, I don't want to do that. The Lord is the one who we are going to be under his dynasty. He's the one we are going to follow. He's the one that will rule over us. However, I do have one request, that each of you give me an earring from the plunder collected from the fallen enemies. The enemy being the Israelites, all wore good hearing. Gladly, they replied, they spread out a clock and each threw in good hearing he had gathered from the plunder. The weight of the good, of the good hearing was 43 pounds, not including the royal ornament or pendants. The purple clothing wore by the king of the media or the chain around the neck of their camels. This guy said, I don't want to be your leader, but you guys can give me your money, you can give me your gold, you can give me your your expensive jewelry. And Gideon made a horrible mistake. Gideon made a secret effort from the gold and put it in Ophrah, his hometown. But soon all the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshipping him. And it became a trap for Gideon and his family. Wow! You know, may the, may the blessing we have today, may the blessing we have to never become a trap to our children, may never, be, may never become a cause to us and our generation after us. Wow! When I was reading it, I was shocked. This guy had a humble spirit. You know, there are some of the pastors there who talk very nicely. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
Everybody should say praise the Lord. They are boasting about their big church numbers. They are boasting about their private jets. They are boasting about their wealth. They are boasting how much God has blessed them. The clothes they are wearing. The car they are driving. The house they live in. I am saying, what is that? Those are trash. But secretly they are worshipping the idol. They are going to sit in houses to go and seek for power. And when they come to the church, the so-called Azimis of people of God, they want to display the power of Satan. And they are calling it miracle, which I call fake miracles. They are talking God is going to give you money, you are going to get a lot on your phone, you are going to get this, they are going to boast to you how rich they are. And I'm saying, excuse me, God is not interested in your money, God is interested in your heart. Is your heart right with God? Are you worshipping the Lord? Is your spirit right with God? Can it be said that you worship God in spirit and in truth? Brothers and sisters, this is the challenge we have today. I don't know what you are doing secretly. I don't know. But let me tell you something. The Lord is aware of what you are doing. Don't hide it from God. You know the children of Israel, very funny. They went under the green tree. They went under the oak tree. They were seven idols. I see God was not aware. God is not seeing them. And God is watching them. You know, like the ostrich. The ostrich puts his head in the sun, thinking nobody can see him. 95% of 99% of his body is outside. Where is hiding his body? So there are a lot of people today who are committing sin in their place of war at school, on the street, in their homes. A lot of things that is going on is so horrible. A lot of married women are doing prostitution in their home as a form of home business. They are pushing what? Money. Brothers and sisters, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. People are doing fraud, one night business, fake business. They are cheating people. They are doing, they are doing internet fraud. Oh, they say they are rich, but they are not. Gideon said, I don't want your riches, but give me your gold. And because he wanted more power, he used his gold to make an idol. And they were worshipping him. And he said, prostituted himself by worshipping him. And it became a trap for Gideon and his family. That is the story of how the people of Israel defeated Midianite, which never recovered, through a rest throughout the rest of Gideon's life, about 40 years, there was peace in the land. You know, God wants us to give up peace. Do you want peace? Serve the Lord. Do you want peace? Introduce the children to God. Do you want peace? Let us serve the Lord. Depart from sin. Honor God. Share God. Read your Bible. Genuinely serve God. There is no man or woman that truly serve God that God will not bless. You know I talk about? Dr. Ezra's father. Dr. Ezra's father was very poor. But Dr. Ezra went to medical school through scholarship and became very rich. I don't know the way, so I don't need God. But God told him, I bless because of your father. Your father served me. And Dr. Ezra was warned in a dream by God and he called for a pastor. And he became a, he became a daughter. He became a, a pastor with his wife. He was a medical daughter and the wife was also a nurse. Both of them were in Lagos those days. And we should sit down and talk. He said, My brother, God bless me because of my father. You know, God can, you, God can bless your children tomorrow, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. What life are you living? What legacy are you leaving behind? What asset are you saying? Are you, are you trying to leave them with a cloth that they will not wear? Or a jewel that will not have value of the house or the car that nobody will drive? When I came to the United States in the 80s, I had this. But we This one is going to, to escalate now. That bull was very big, it was like a house. Gasoline was very cheap, 25 cents a gallon. 25 cents a gallon was extremely very cheap. And then I, I filled my dark car and I put on my music and I'm, I'm cruising on the highway. There was a truck on the car, very lovely car, very powerful car. You don't feel anything when you're on the ground. If I'm still driving that car, everyone will look at me and say, it's an old car because things have changed. Of 
before they have modernized it. So you find that, brothers and sisters, don't be deceived by materiality because materiality is passing away. The Gideon son of Joas returned home. He had 70 sons born to him. Wow, this guy is a busy man. He has 70 sons who has many wives. He has many wives. If each of them have five, five children, that's a lot of children. Each of them have 30 children. That's a lot of wives. He also had a cocoa band, a prostitute in Shechem, who gave birth to his son, whom he named Abimelech. Gideon died when he was very old. That is part of life. We are going to die one day. He was buried in the grave of his father, George, at Ophrah, in the land of the town of Abizar. As soon as Gideon died, the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshiping by worship the image of Baal. Remember, Gideon created this idol for them. They want to create more now. They think that will make Gideon very successful. Making Baal buried their God. They forget the God. They love their God who had rescued them from all their enemies. Surrounded them. Nor did they show any royalty to Jeroboam. That is Gideon. Despite all the good he had done for them. When we go to chapter 9, that son that was a prostitute, Abimelech, killed 70 of Gideon's son in his store. And one of his sons escaped and caused him mad and trouble came. What legacy are you leaving behind? You know, we have children from every marriage, there could be, or from every relationship, there could be a lot of trouble in the future. But you may not see right now. After the man is dead, they can begin to fight over the house. Over the father property. And they may injure each other, they may kill each other. But that time, they are focusing on what they are going to get. So this Abimelech was a prostitute's son, now became a very wicked son, and he killed all his other brothers. Brothers and sisters, we have to be very careful the seed we are sowing. What are you doing right now? Are you serving the Lord? Are you secretly worshiping idol? Thinking nobody is seeing you? Do you pray? Do you read your Bible? Do you commune with God? Do you make sure your hands are clean when you go to work? Do you go to a job to sleep? Oh, see, I'm, I'm doing a very good job. I'm doing two or three jobs. I'm making good money. But you know you're not working. When you go there, you really sleep. Or are you cheating government? Or are you cheating your work, your employee or employer by embellishing your hours to work or by cheating or by stealing? Brothers and sisters, the Lord is coming. Judgment will surely come, either now or after. But the best thing you should do is to leave a legacy that your children will be proud of. Your grandchildren. When they say, oh, my grandma was a Christian. I remember those days, my grandma, I was told my grandma used to pray. I was told my grandfather used to pray. I was told he always need that and praying. That is the best legacy you can earn. They will say, that's why God bless us. I remember my mother used to pray a lot. My mother used to go to Bible study. I know every Saturday as a little young man, I used to know my mom used to log into this man who was teaching the word of God. I would never hear the man ask for, for money. He was always talking about God, about sin, about forgiveness, about loving God. My mom was always going there. I could hear when my mom was talking and I listened to the, to the man. I never see the man's face, but I was hearing his voice. And I, I loved the man's teaching. My mom was always reading. After the film, my mom go and read the Bible. My mom was always praying. Is that what you're going to be said about you? Oh, I know. You may think nobody sees what you're doing. Actually, you don't know what you're doing. They say, my mom was a crook. I know, I know they say, my mom will go and cheat. My mom will go and lie. You think nobody sees what you're doing. Your children are seeing you. And they will tell you, I'm not children. Other people are seeing you. Maybe at your workplace, you are cheating. You just go and hide. think nobody is seeing you. They are seeing you. You may think nobody is seeing you. You embellish your money. You cheat. God is seeing you. Brothers and sisters, how are you living your life? Are you living your life to please the Lord? Or you are leading to this politician? Or you go to these big churches, all they talk about is miracle money. Miracle money. But the miracle is not the people are getting poorer and poorer today. Crime is increasing. Prostitution is increasing. People are getting more and more sick today. There are medical there are diseases that define medical treatment. You can be a witness. 
go to the hospital. They are inventing me this every day. And they are inventing new medicine. And when the very medicine, this medicine will cure you of this one, but it will create seven more diseases. I say, what? They say, this is selling for this medicine. I say, that is not right. And the pastor and politician are speaking from the same, they are talking with the same side of the mouth. You never know who is who. When you put it together, you lead to the speech. The politician will be talking, and you need to speak. The, the, the pastor is talking. You say, oh, both of them are running for office. Say, oh, no, no. One of them is the pastor. Which one is the pastor? You may even point to the politician as the pastor because they are all liars, they are all thieves, they are all crooks. Even America here and around the world, brothers and sisters, distinguish yourself from the evil men and women. Live a life because we are all going to die one day and give your die. And all the 70 children you have, more than 70, about 75 children you have, 70 of them were killed. Might be more than 70, 100 or 100 something children. I will search how many children have because they are not even daughters. Probably have to ask how many daughters they have. If you have 70, 72 or 73 sons, how many daughters does he have? And that's a lot of children. And I know the way there was conflict in the family because they are from different parents. Brothers and sisters, be content what you have. We brought nothing into this world. We are going to take nothing away. Don't labor. Bible says, cease from laboring. Seek the Lord while you will be found and rest. Don't kill yourself because of money. Don't kill yourself because you want to train your children. Don't kill yourself because you want to go on vacation. Don't kill yourself because you want to buy a car. You want to buy a house. Or you want to buy jewelry. You want to buy clothes. They are all vanity. They are good. I don't say don't buy them. We are not living on the street. By the grace of God, I live in a house. I drive a car too. I have some clothes. But I don't focus on them. I focus on pleasing the Lord. This message we are, we, are taught, we are teaching today, I have spent hours and hours during the week studying this. I have been, I have been studying and studying and studying. I have been writing. I send you my write-up. I have to look at the passages, try to find something to write. It took me almost a whole week to start writing. And it was on Friday, I started perfecting it on Thursday. I started perfecting it right up, and yesterday I sent to you, read it. Ask God to speak to you. Examine your life. Don't stop idle. Don't hide. God is seeing you. In case you haven't known God, and wherever you're heading this world, take your time to serve the Lord. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. And uh, we are here to serve God and to do God's will. So I ask God to be with you and give you grace in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, I give you light to Jesus and confess your sins. Give your life to Jesus and you he will, will be rewarded. Give your life to Jesus and you will be rewarded. Give your life to Jesus and you will be rewarded. Give your life to Jesus and you will be rewarded. Brothers and sisters, give your life to Jesus. And you will be rewarded. I want to let you know God loves you. He very loves you. And God wants to bless you. But what we focus on today, that's not what God calls a blessing. The greatest blessing you can have is eternal life. Yes. Divine grace power. That is the greatest blessing you can have. Every other thing we have, we are going to, we are going to leave them behind. We are going to leave them behind. When my mother in law died, she has so many clothes, so many so many beads, so many jewelry, so many poor. Oh my God! I said this woman was a great woman. Although she 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 was a, she was she is princess. She was princess, and she was she, she was very. We just built her a very beautiful house, very beautiful house. And we could never even open the house when she died. And when they started dividing those clothes, they give my wife a lot of the clothes. And they sent her some of the jewelries. My wife had not even sold them. Some of them never even sold them. Just was buying them piece by piece. And 
Oh my God, she left everything behind. I want to look at the whole thing and say, what is the value of life? What is the value? And she had a lot of money in the bank account also. We were always selling her money every month. When I call her, have you finished the money? She said, no, the one you sent before, I will say, let me put more. I don't want you to say you want to buy something, you are looking for the money. And I say, all I need from you, just pray for me. That God will bless my children. That is the prayer I ask, that they will know Christ, that they will love God, they will serve Him. May God help us in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, I'm calling you to do repent. Give your life to Jesus. Don't get corrupt to the society in America here. There is a corruption. People are stealing from government in the name of business. People are committing prostitution in the name of business. Mm. And people are doing evil things in the name of business. And in other countries, politicians are stealing the money from the treasury. But don't be part of them. Because they are only deceiving themselves like children playing in the sand. Serve the Lord. Love the Lord. Turn from wickedness. And you will be rewarded. We are going to stop here today. And uh, we are going to pray. If you have any prayer requests, I want you to let us know so that we can join our faith to pray with you. Bible say, one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand, three shall chase a hundred thousand, four shall chase one million. Mathematically, it is better for me to join four people or three people with me who have faith. And we pray together because if we are even dividing the dividend, it will be of a great value to me because each of us will have 250,000 instead of just having 1,000. If you pray on your own, you have 1,000. I pray my own, I have 1,000. If we join together, we have 10,000. If we say, let's you go for another person, we join her together, we have 100,000. That is 33,000 plus for, for each person. You say, well, let us make, make it better. We look for four person, we now have 250,000. You see the power of God. We, we synthesize the energy, become very, very powerful. So, most of our brothers and sisters, they are on their various families meeting. Those in Dallas have gone to California. Those in California have gone to different states. And they are all over the whole place. Those of them have written to me, they will not go to join us today. I ask God to be with them. I pray and decrease and join us. So, our sister Uche he has arrived in Nigeria by the grace of God, and then she sent her greeting. It's on the line to learn from Nigeria. We ask God to bless Eha and give her more grace in Jesus. Father God, we want to bless and magnify your holy name. Yes, Lord. Your word say, Come unto me, all ye who labor and a heavy lady, I will give you rest. Yes. Your word say, The other men therefore rest to the poor God. Yes, Lord. We bless you because you are the one that gives rest. Yes. We just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you because you are the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, the one that walketh in the winds of wind, the one that made the heaven and the earth, the one that is the Almighty God. Yes. You say, I am God, I change it now, so you, my people, are not consumed. Yes. And I will bless you for your word you have heard today. Thank you, Lord. If there is any who have sinned against you, we are to forgive us, that you have mercy upon us, and deliver us from sickness, from disease, and from poverty, and from the hand of those that hate us. Father, our life is in your hand. Yes, Lord. We have no parts of our own, okay. some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, some trust in talisman, some trust in the power they have, we trust in Jehovah God, the one that made the heaven and the earth. Father, we are yours and yours alone. Bless us and let your word be relevant in our time and our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I pray for our brothers and sisters, our friends and partners, those who will hear this word later on by way of social media. That your grace be rich with us all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy Father, pray for our sister, Ruche, that your word be rich to us. Her. Yes. As you bless her, we thank you for the safe journey you've given to her to arrive in Nigeria safely. Father, we are grateful. We just say thank you. Thank you Lord. We say thank you for what you are doing right now. We say thank you for what you have done. We just say thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy Father, we thank you because you are the Alpha, you are the Omega. You are the beginning, you are the end. Yes, Lord. The one that says, I will build my church, and the gate of hell cannot prevail against the Father. Thank you, Lord, because you are your church in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Our friends and partners that have traveled to various parts of this country for one thing and the other. Father, be with them. Yes, Lord. And tell them to respect their state and home safely in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. anyone, anyone of us that is sick, 
He was a healing the children's bread. Yes, so he sent forth your word and healed all their diseases. And I touched your body and healed it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I forgive our brothers and sisters. I may have sinned against you. I may have offended you one way or the other. And you have mercy upon us all in Jesus' name. But I bless this nation. Bless Nigeria, let there peace and God that part of the world. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for Joe Biden and the Congress that they may be peace and they will walk in unity and pass the policy and laws that will bless nation and bless us in Jesus' name. But I protest us from all natural disaster and from the hand of those that hate us in Jesus' name. Amen. But I ask us to pray for them by word social media and by phone call for that bless all of them answer their prayers in Jesus' name. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we find what we God and most of all come in contact with in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace of love be with you, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Bye-bye.